wow, right out of the gate, and I'm not even wearing a jacket. It's a beautiful morning this morning. We're going to hit the bee yard right away here. The ice isn't off the pond yet, but the sun is absolutely terrific, and we're going to make use of it today. So we are just about to head out to the bee yard and get some beekeeping done. Maybe we'll be able to get two truckloads. We'll see how the day goes. So in the mail here, I got a parcel from a uh, Mohammed Elban from Lebanon, quite a ways away. And he sent me a book that he put together here. He wanted me to take a look at it on all the types of pollen in the world. And just absolutely brilliant. He's got every single type of pollen where you'd look at it from underneath the microscope and be able to identify it and whereabouts the pollens come from different uh, areas in the world. And just exactly, I think he tapped into a conversation we were having on Facebook where somebody was uh, uh, asking about how do you identify pollen, give me some reference or some literature to help me uh, identify the different pollen grains and how do we know what's in our honey and all this kind of stuff. So this guy tapped into that conversation and he said, well, here, here's a book that I published and that is very much appreciated. So thank you, Mohammed, and I appreciate the gift. We haven't had too many morning type bee working days so far this spring. And the bees are telling us to get busy to get to work and we are going to listen to them. We've dropped 20 bags so far within the yards and they're just about done those 20 bags. So I am expecting these trees to come into bloom anytime soon now. And maybe, just maybe with this nice weather that's upon us and looks like it might be holding for us. Just maybe these trees will start to come out by the end of the week, I hope. Because we could sure use some natural pollen coming into these colonies and we could sure use some warmth to be able to allow these clusters to expand a little bit and, you know, just get some development going on here. It's kind of textbook. The, uh, the, the bees coming out of the shed, they come out of the winter, you set them down, you want them to be able to flip that nest into that springtime nest with vigor and with girth so they can, you know, flip that winter nest out and go instantly into expansion mode. But we've been terribly staggered by just that cold weather. We set them out. We had the opportunity to target these hives for food stores. You know, they had three or four good days to relieve themselves and just initiate that development. Then we we're just hammered with cold weather which kind of set these colonies back in their heels a little bit. So that flip over from that winter nest into spring wasn't as fluid as, as it should have been. The larger colonies, you know, they'd be able to maintain themselves, uh, just basically maintenance. But the smaller colonies, I don't know, it really kind of set them back a little bit. So I think we're gonna to have to do a little bit of extra work just to be able to revive the smaller ones. 